How you doing, Steve Noble, Noble Moto? Uh, I got a big project here for this winter. I uh, got some high compression pistons here. New uh, 95 inch. Check these out. Got some 95 inch jugs. High compression, 10 to 1 pistons in this sucker. Uh, we're gonna put them on here. Um, already got 510 gear cam in the thing and uh, SNS Super E carb on there. And uh, might even check out the heads while we're in there. You know, do a little cleanup work. But I uh, should put this up somewhere around uh, 95 horse. In the whole nine yards uh, should be pretty good pretty good uh, horsepower and torque upgrade should be a little over 100 foot pounds according to online estimates so uh i'm gonna go over this uh we're gonna do most of this on time lapse as far as the top tear down then when i actually get into like the major motors uh i'll actually slow the camera down and show you what's going on and um i'm gonna talk over the time lapse a little bit and uh i'll add that in and uh you know just let you know what's going on and what the plan is here and uh, this is actually a pretty simple upgrade. Most, uh, if you're fairly competent uh, with wrenches, uh, you can do this on your own. Uh, it takes a little tension to detail, a little patience, don't rush through it, but it's a pretty easy upgrade, big horsepower boost, you'll be happy you did it. So, let's get to it. All right, up here, now we're taking the head pipe off. Here's how this is done. The best way to do this is a quarter inch drive, half inch socket. That's because these have the thinnest walls, so it's easiest to reach around the heat shields without having to pull the heat shields off. So that, and absurd amount of extensions. Plus keeps All right, here we are. Now all the head pipe is unbolted. I already pulled the bolt out right down here. And obviously the muffler's off it. Now everybody, will, I'm sure everybody's seen the argument go down on Facebook about like, dude, the head pipe won't come off. The two and one head pipe, do, 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 do. Trust me, they'll come off. So what you do, pull it out a little bit from the bottom. Wiggle a little bit, make sure the back flange is off. Make sure the front flange is off the studs. Wiggle it a little bit more. And there's a little clearance right down here and right down here which is just uh, that much clearance to get it out of there. So wiggle it down, just like that. Look, off, on, off, on. Comes right out of there. If you try to pull it up or out or sideways, it's gonna jam in there. Huh, well that'd be a fun one. All right, we're off time lamps. Now we're off to a little more technical stuff here. So, Getting the push rod tubes off. Bring the camera over here. And you can see up here, there's these little clips. You put a flathead screwdriver in there. You flick it out from the bottom. You have to switch hands to do the other one. So I'll do one on the back here. Screwdriver and the little tab, flick it out from the bottom. If you're lucky, you won't drop it like I did the last one. From there, this is loose. The bottom's loose. Slides up in there as a little spring. Push rod tubes loose. Now, I don't have adjustable push rods in here. I don't really care for them, because uh, if I don't have to put them in, because I think it's too much weight whipping back and forth. Um, so my theory is, uh, you know, when you do cams and stuff, pull the gas tank, pull the rocker box, do it the right way. In this case, head's got to come off either way, so it doesn't make a difference. So, pop the rest of the push rod tubes free here. All right, got the rocker box off of there. All right, so now we got these last little, uh, or well, we got the rockers out of there. I got these last uh, four bolts here that actually hold the rocker box to the head. Sorry, six bolts. There's two more on the other side. Uh, All right, got the last bolt out of there. Lift it up off. Realize the engine mount stud is in your way. Drop down the floor. There you go. There's the bottom half of the rocker box. 
put that someplace clean. Now, last four bolts. Well, sorry, first, take lift your push rod tubes up out of there. They should pop right up out of there at this point. If your push rods are out, just recompress the springs. Well, plenty of moderate springs in there. So those are out. I'm gonna take some uh whoop. I'm gonna take some shop towels. I'm gonna put some rags down in here, keep the dirt out of the lifters. Alright, now for the head bolts. Got a half inch 12 point socket. Hopefully you can see it in there. Whoop. Half inch 12 point. Got a half inch drive breaker bar. Pop it on there. Break them free. Make sure the bike's secure when you do this. Break the back one free. Woo! Baby, they weren't screwing around with that one. Now, the other two on the other side. All right, head bolts are off. Grab a hold of the head, make sure everything's off, out of the way. So I pulled the condition coil out here so it's out of the way. And pretty much lift. You should feel the gasket break free. And there is your cylinder head. Ta-da! There's your intake. Your valves. It's pretty decent sized valves in there actually. Down the intake runner there. Here's your stock head gasket. Obviously you never want to reuse head gaskets. Try to get any dirt down in the oil ports there. Oil return galleys. Stock head gasket. Throw that in the trash. Now we're gonna grab some shop rags. That way we can catch any dirt or anus. And from here, your jug should lift right up off the cylinder. Since I am not reusing these in the immediate future, it's okay if I pull the jug off and uncompress the rings. Now we're going to take some shop rags, clean ones, not that one. We're going to put some shop rags down in here around the rod. That way we don't get any dirt down in there. And more importantly, we don't lose this little snap ring down in there. Now we're going to go for a ride on over here. Hopefully you can see inside here, the little snap ring, that holds a wrist pin in. We're going to take that out. All right, here we go. Got the camera in one hand, tiny little flathead screwdriver in another. There's a little notch down in here. I'm going to lift up. And the snap ring just came out, and if you heard, it just went halfway across my garage. And we have new ones in the uh, new piston kit, so losing it, not the end of the world. I'm um, just glad it didn't go in the motor. Next step from there, push on the other side of the wrist pin. This might be a two-hand job. Can't push it with one hand. Um, but the wrist pin should slide out. Might take a little tapping. Change camera angles. All right, using socket extension ever so slightly. Tap that little wrist pin right on out of there. You'll feel the piston drop. That's when the wrist pin's out of the rod. From there, pull your extension out. Lift your wrist pin right up off the rod. While you're in here, check your rod bore out, make sure everything looks good. It does in this case. There you have it, it's disassembly. Got our new wrist pin right here. We're gonna take this, we're gonna slide it in there. See how she feels. No up and down play, no slop, super tight fit. Gotta love that, just as it should be. Also gonna look down in there, everything looks good inside that bore. 
So I think we're good for reassembly. All right, how you doing? Steve Noble, Noble Moto. Um, here at the front of the engine, I um, already did the rear cylinder. Um, now we're going to do the front cylinder. And uh, I'm going to cover gap and rings and uh, cylinder assembly. Uh, before you go to put the jug back on, one of the things you want to remember is there's a little O-ring right here. And um, hopefully you can see that. Uh, there's a little O-ring right there. A uh, little groove for it right there. And uh, that is the oil line up to your head. Well, technically the return line, but whatever. But want to make sure you get a new O-ring in there before you do anything else. Next, uh, grab your jug. And before you put your jug on here, you have a base O-ring gasket. This will go on the bottom of your jug right here. Make sure this is all clean, of course. Slide that O-ring up in there. Make sure it's up in the groove. It's not sitting weird, any little twisted angles or anything like that. Slide this down over top of your studs. Once you get the holes lined up, and push the rod up in the middle, it should drop right down in there. Just like that. All right. Now the next thing we gotta do is gap the rings on this thing. Uh, and the way this actually works, as soon as I locate the piston ring that I just had in my hand. So you have your piston rings here. So when this is in there, it's gonna squeeze together. And you don't wanna have, or you know, when it's around the piston and inside the jug. So you don't wanna have too big of a gap there because obviously you'll have blow by. And then if you have too small of a gap there, um, when your piston heats up and your ring heats up, it'll expand and it'll actually bind up on itself and then it's gonna bind up inside the jug. So, what you're going to do, this is the bottom piston ring. We're going to take this, we're going to put it down inside the jug. You always want to do this in the cylinder it's going into. So, line that sucker up right down in there. So, it's down in there. See it in place there. It's down into the bore. It's level and square. You can still see the gap going on right there. So now, um, I already did the math. There's a get math. It's something like uh, four and a half to five thousandths um, per inch of cylinder diameter. Uh, and these are three and seven eighths pistons. So uh, I believe we were going for, um, I don't remember what it is. Let's see where we're starting at. So we're going to take our feeler gauges. Uh, I think minimum it was going to be like 16 or 17 thousandths gap. So we're going to start with 16. We're just going to slide this in there, see how she fits. Got lots of extra room. So then we're going to go up. You'll see the numbers are written on here. We're going to go up to 20 thousandths of an inch. Oh, that's, that's a pretty tight fit there. We'll go up to 21, just see where we're at next. I'm betting 21 is probably going to be too tight. 21 does not make it all the way to the cylinder jug wall here. So we're going to go, that's a 20 thousandths gap. We're actually sitting in pretty good shape right there. So next step from there uh, is to gap the upper ring. This is the lower ring. You want to keep these separated, that way you don't lose them or get them screwed up. Upper ring gaps to the same amount. And pretty much the same procedure. Some to read your at least on this setup, it does sometimes your uh piston manufacturer, you know, engine kit manufacturer will gap the uh, top one differently than the bottom one. Um, read your instructions that come along with your big board kit. Uh, it's not just packing material, you're actually supposed to read the instructions. So, 20 thousandths, we're just going to start with that because that's where it was on the back. That actually fits really well. I believe we can go up to 25 or 26 thousandths. Oh, 21 on that. Go up to 23. Oh, 23 is a tad bit too tight, so we'll probably call it 22 then. We'll check this to make sure. 22, definitely. So we're sitting really good on that ring. Pop back out of there. If we needed to do anything with it, we'd hold this on a flat bench and take a little small flat file, shave a few thousandths of this off, make sure you keep it 
you know, on the same plane. Shave a few, you know, shave a thou or two off or whatever you needed, come back, check it, then repeat. So that's pretty much gapped in your piston rings. All right, next step, I'm going to put the piston rings actually on the piston. Um, this is the lower compression ring, so it's going to go on the, whoops, sorry, there we are. This is the lower compression ring, so it's going to go on the middle groove here. Um, so we're just going to start by walking this out with our fingers. I'm going to be ever so carefully doing this. You don't want to scratch up the side of the piston. Definitely don't want to bend the ring. You don't want to pop it out any more than you have to. So initially it found home here in the first groove, but we actually want it in the second groove, so we're going to go around here. Pop it in there. Then we're just going to kind of walk it out and around. Maybe. There we go. Of course it gets stuck. Of course one's always got to fight you a little bit. There we go. Down into the second groove right there. Just like that. And repeat for the top piston ring. Do it here just for general demonstration. Once again, start it down in there like so. Kind of walk it on around there, just like that. It should, whoop, snap into place like that. Now, when you do reassemble it, we're still going to put the oil ring on, but when you do reassemble this, I always try to get these things, the gap in here, 180 off. Some people say 90, I like 180. Uh, as long as you're sitting at least 90, you're doing pretty good. You just don't want it directly in line because then you'd have an easy path for it to blow by. Next on the list is the oil ring. When you do the oil ring, this is actually like the oil wiper ring. Let me get it in my hand here. When you do the oil ring, you want to put the little middle squiggly ring on first because then the other two rings sit into tiny little notches that you may or may not be able to see here on camera. So these are also very delicate rings, so it doesn't take too much to knock them out of sorts. So once again, ever so gently, Pop it on there like so. Now, oil ring ring. There's no top or bottom to these ones, so just pop this on here. And there is a top and bottom to your compression ring. Uh, check your directions uh, to specify that. So we're just gonna walk that right around there. That goes on the bottom there like so. And of course, top piston ring here. We're going to offset these two, the notch that is. Top piston ring. Top, there we are. Snaps in there like so, all the way around. Once again, we'll check top and bottom piston rings are there. We're going to set the gap on the oil ring. It's 90 degrees there. That one should be, oh, by the way, 90 degrees to the bottom one. There's the bottom one. So it's a little past 90. So we're sitting pretty good. So next step is put the piston ring compressor on here and uh, compress it down and uh, slide it on down in the jug. Just test fit. We'll just set that right there for now. All right, got the piston rings on. Got our piston ring compressor here. Uh, it's a cheapo one. Got it from AutoZone or Advanced Auto Parts or wherever the local generic auto parts store is. Pretty run of the mill. Just slide it down in there in there where the rings are, you know, up inside the groove on it. And they give you a, usually a little thumb screw or something. In this case, a little T Allen wrench. And as you wind it tight here, you'll see the little ratchet there clicks. We're just gonna get it close here. And we'll make sure everything's all nice and squared up in there. Like so, just like that. And we'll crank that sucker down tight. There we go. Just like it should be. Got a little arrow on our piston. Make sure it goes forward. We're going to slide the piston down inside the jug right there. Actually, we're going to take the piston back out of the jug. So I like to put a little film of oil in here before we assemble the whole thing. 
Got some sitting over here in a pan. Whoop. Got a little 90 weight. Uh, I just happen to have it out uh, from a clutch project I'm also doing. Uh, the General Motor oil, you know, 10W30, 2050, whatever you use in your engine, will work just fine. So, back to where we were. Slide the piston down in there like so. I'm going to turn it just slightly so this... Oh, there we are. Okay. Now you're going to want to take a soft mallet um, or something you have that won't leave any dings on the piston. Um, I was using the wood handle of a claw hammer because my dead blow is at work. So if we're going to take this wood handle of a claw hammer, we're just going to give a little tap down in there. And it should scoot right down in. All right, here. You can see we got the piston started, or well, obviously it started and slid all the way down in here. We got the wrist pin in one side. So we're going to do. We're going to slide this up back in here over top of the jug ever so carefully. We're going to slide the rod up in the middle of the piston. Slide it all down on there. Right now the jug is just sitting on top of studs. Also, like remember, we have our O-ring right here. If you forget, you have to take the whole thing back apart like I did on the rear cylinder. So, I got a little lube here on the front of my piston or my uh, wrist pin. Uh, so we are going to initially line this up best we can piston through the rod slide the wrist pin in there slide it into the rod it should go in with your thumb whoop all the way in just like that now we'll switch camera angles all right we have the Okay, so wrist pin is already in here. Uh, next step we have to do is to put the retaining clip back in here. And as you can see, I have a whole bunch of rags shoved around the base of the uh, piston here. Um, the idea is if I drop this wrist pin or it shoots out of here, which there's a very good chance this could happen, it, it at least doesn't go into the bottom of the motor and then I have to tear the motor apart to get it out. Granted, it could go flying across the shop, but uh, just a risk I'm gonna have to take. So this might be in time lapse, depending on how long it takes. I was recently told that. There we go. Sometimes it goes right in, sometimes it doesn't. There we go. All nice sit down in there. Back up in the top. We're back in the groove. She's in place. Pull this out, pull the other shop rag out. Nobody wants sharp rags down the motor. Got the O-ring up on here. Got this O-ring here on the oil return. And we're going to take the jug, wheel it around, make sure the bolts are in the holes. It should just slide right down on there. Dun, 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 dun. Cool. Next stop, cylinder head. All right, got the jugs back on. O-rings are in place, everything. Got our new head gasket right here. I uh, got this from Cometic. Um, very nice of them. Uh, they make good stuff. Big fans of their products. Uh, so, pretty straightforward. Got your two pins here, four bolts here. Uh, there's no real up or down to this thing. It's got a lip going both ways. So we will drop that right there on the pins, or on the studs. Then we're going to take our head, all nice and cleaned up over here. Got the cylinder head here. It's all nice and cleaned up. Yeah, I didn't clean out the combustion chamber, but Cleaned off the gasket surface. Now look down there, make sure everything looks good. There's no debris in it. I even gave it a little, I don't know if you can see or not, but gave it a little buff out there with the Dremel. A little hillbilly head porting. And uh, slide this sucker back up in here. And then wonder why I can't find the bolt holes. There we are. Drop it right down on the studs there. Just like that. Now, before we put the uh, studs back on here, I'm gonna pull a little oil here. Pull the oil there whoop, into the bottom of the bolts. Uh, just lubricate up the threads on them. And of course, you want to tighten all these down evenly and torque them to spec. 
a nice even pattern. I'm going to thread these down in here. I got the middle ones here. Got a little pan oil over here to the side. Some oil on there. And drop that one down in there. Hopefully you can see that. And that one down in there. Make sure you tighten them down evenly, even when you're running them with your finger here, just so they don't pull crooked on you. And cock the head to the side. I'm going to take our socket, and um, the socket for this, uh, so obviously it's a 12 point. I'm using a half inch 12 point socket. Seems to fit on there nicely. Uh, I'm sure it's probably some technically specialty socket you're supposed to use that Harley sells for. An upgrade price, but hey, I'm gonna snug that one down, snug that one down, snug that one down, and that one down. All right, and just to seat everything, I'm just gonna give them a little bit of a bump with a socket wrench, just enough to where you feel everything kind of bottoms out there. Kind of two fingers on the uh, socket wrench there. All right, I think it should be back down. Get a little bit more there. You can see I'm kind of creeping up on this. You don't want to go too much. You know that sucker cock sideways. All kinds of problems will happen. All right, those are, yeah, those are pretty good there. All right, so next step, let's torque it all down. All right, so here's what the factory manual says. Let's just torque all these down in the sequence, the cross pattern sequence. Torque them down to 15 to 17 foot pounds. Then, then mark the bolt, the head of the bolt location, and turn it a quarter turn more. I really don't know why they don't just give you a torque spec on this. It seems awfully hillbilly to do it this way, but it's what they did. So I torqued it down already, 15, 17. So we're going to mark those ones, those ones. Got a little red felt tip pen. Whoop. That come off. I mean, you could probably just use your socket wrench too. So we're going to go in our uh, sequence pattern here. And one quarter turn. Have it beyond there. Uh, this one here. That's going to take two eight turns. And same with there. A little bit more to get our full core turn mark. There you have it. Pretty much the uh, the basis of your big bore installation. Reassemble your heads. Uh, you know your rocker box everything which I'll go over that in the next video uh, But that's pretty much it ready to push the top end back together rejet or retune or whatever you got Go tear ass down the road. That's all I got